So there is a wonderful text called The Hundred Verses of Advice by Padam Pasangje. He is an Indian yogi. He lived at the same time of, uh, as Milarepa. Even though it did say he was, he, came, he became about, I think it said 500 years old. I don't know exactly, but in any case, he did meet Milarepa. That was in the ninth century. And uh, before he died, he taught these hundred verses of advice to his students. And it's a wonderful, wonderful text that is so full of, of relevant advice to all of us. Depend, it doesn't, doesn't matter which, you know, when we're living, whether we live in this century, previous centuries, future centuries, it will all be very relevant. So one of the uh, things he talked about in those verses was difficulties or obstacles we can have uh, when we're on the path, when we're on the spiritual path. What is it that stops us from achieving our result? He also talks about the view, you know, the right view, having the right view, right action, and um, the result that we're trying to achieve. But he says there's certain things that get in the way. Many things get in the way, of course, for all of us. Uh, but he talks specifically about these obstacles or faults uh, to, the, to our accomplishing the, the result. So one of the obscurations, he calls them obscurations, one of the obscurations is simply thoughts. Thoughts. How many thoughts do we have? Do we ever not have any thoughts? Constantly thinking, constantly busy thinking. So these thoughts obscure our mind from having direct experience. So he says, thoughts come and go like a thief in an empty house. People of Dingri, in fact, there is nothing to be gained or lost. So he's speaking to people in his in this place of Tibet near the border called Dingri, people of Dingri. could be people of London, it could be people of Europe, it could be people of any part of the country. He's talking to all of us as human beings. So he says this, thoughts come and go. The reason um, we have difficulties attaining this recogn like recognition of the nature of mind is because of such a prolifer proliferation of thoughts and not recognizing that they have no substance. We solidify everything. We solidify the thoughts. Here he says, thoughts come and go like a thief in an empty house where there's nothing to be gained or lost. But actually, that's not how we relate to thoughts. We, our thoughts are more like a thief that comes into a house thinking there is lots to be gained, there's lots to be lost. We are very fixated on what we need to grasp on our grasping, on our needs. Uh, our house is not empty. Our house is full of uh, hope and fear, attachment and aversion. But what we need to recognize is this no substance, no solidity to the thought. Not give the thought so much value. The reason we have obstacles on the path is we give all our thoughts an enormous amount of value. We believe in our thoughts, whatever they tell us. They could be telling us scare stories, horror stories, stories about the past, stories about the future. Our problem is we believe in all of them and we solidify it. So this is an obstacle. It becomes an obstacle for us. We need to relate to thoughts as if there was nothing to be gained and nothing to be lost. We need to recognize that. Then he says feelings, feelings and sensations is another area where we are so caught up. We are sort of like, we are trapped. We are like a, like a deer trapped in the forest, in one of these traps on the forest floor. We are like any animal that is trapped in a, in a, you know, a fly that is trapped in these old-fashioned glue traps that used to be there. That's how stuck we are on feelings. 
We cannot let go of feelings. We are encouraging feelings. We need feelings. We are even attached to our painful feelings. So here Padampa Sangha says, sensations leave no imprints. Like drawings made on water. People of Jingri don't perpetrate such deluded appearances. Don't perpetrate these feelings because they are just like drawings on the surface of water. Why would we have so much attachment to something on the surface of a water? It might be beautiful in one moment or like a, you see the rivulets in a, in, in a water, you know, the flow of the water, the waves can be very beautiful to sit and look at, but we're not attached to it. We're not trying to hold on to it. We're not grasping to it because we know it is just flowing water. He's saying we should not be so deluded as to hold on to our feelings as if there was anything real. They are only deluded appearances. We should overcome our attachments and grasping to feelings. Why is it that we are constantly striving, needing to be fed, needing this? We have a, we are like, uh, what do you call it? Um, atta- um, addicted. We are addicted to feelings. It is a form of addiction. So we are addicted, addicted to pe- pleasurable feelings. We are addicted to painful feelings. We go over and over and over again our painful feelings for some very strange, perverted reason. We keep recalling painful old memories, even though they make us sad and depressed. Why do we do that? Very strange when you think about it. Or we chase and chase and chase after pleasure, one pleasure after another. And our life is this constant circle of you know, running, 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 chasing, 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 one thing, another thing, another thing. Always trying to fulfill this craving that we have, a lack of contentment. So it's like being a hungry ghost. A hungry ghost where we find no satisfaction. That is what, because feelings have no, no solidity, right? No content, no nourishment. And when we're always grasping for something else, we're unsatisfied. So that's why there's like a hungry ghost. So Padampa Sangha is telling us to overcome our attachment to feelings, our grasping to feelings. We should relate to them like that, like drawings on the surface of water. They just flow on. They just move on. No big deal. They come, they go, they come, they go. We don't identify with them. We let them let them move on. They have no essence. They leave no trace. So there's nothing really to chase after. There's also nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to fear in terms of feelings. Very important that we learn to to recognize how feelings arise and to recognize how we get stuck with feelings, how we fixate on feelings and how much suffering that gives us. Of course, this is all about freeing ourselves from our obstacles. These are, what Padamba Sangha says, these are um, obscurations that block us really attaining the results on the path. So then the next one he says is, Attachment and aversion, talking about attachment and aversion. So he says, thoughts of attachment and aversion are like rainbows in the sky. People of Dingri, there is nothing in them to be grasped or apprehended. Our attachment and aversion you know, arises out of our, our thoughts, our uh, projections, conceptualizing, comparing. Uh, our distorted perceptions, value judgment. So he's saying, just like a rainbow in the sky, why would we get so caught up in chasing after attachment and aversion when there is nothing truly to be found? We all know the story of the 
the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and how it is just impossible to find that. I think there is a, oh, what is it? There's a, I suddenly remember there's a, uh, I think it's a Tibetan saying that says, if you can ride, ride backwards on a dog with a, a piece of shit in your hands <laughs> for a very long time, and um, I, I'm not sure this. I think I'm not getting the full story of this, but it's something like that. That is something that you would never, never, never do. But if you do it, you will find that pot of gold. <laughs> of course, we never find anything. Uh, uh, there's nothing. We know there's nothing there to to grasp at. We know that there is nothing solid. It is just appearance and emptiness. And that's how, you know, we should relate to feelings, just like a rainbow. There's nothing to be grasped. But again, we are very, very caught up in our chasing after objects of attachment. We are very caught up in running away from the things that we have aversion towards. We get into a lot of difficulty, a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of fear, a lot of uh, confusion due to attachment and aversion. Ignorance, attachment, aversion are our root poisons. So we need to recognize that uh, and be careful and be mindful not to allow them to rule our life, not to allow them to uh, dictate us, and instead to recognize that these attachment aversions, they are just like a rainbow. Don't get stuck. I think the, uh, the main message I feel in these obscurations is our tendency to fixate. We must let go, learn to let go of fixation. We must learn to let go, simply let go. This is our most difficult part. We cannot let go. We are not able to let go. We are so fixated, so addicted. So what we should do, maybe as a remedy to, to this, yes, Remember that rainbow aspect, the insubstantial aspect to feelings, attachments, and aversions. And then nurture positive emotions is very important. We should nurture appreciation. We should nurture gratitude. We should nurture positive feelings for all the good things that we have in our life. And not just think about the negative, not just think about the things we don't have, not just think about the things we want. Craving is suffering. Desire is suffering. It is a state of mind that is unfulfilled. So we need to nurture contentment. Be content with what we have. Actually, everything is perfectly fine as it is. Mindfulness, carefulness, and this view of non-solidity. And then Padampasanti goes on to talk about the mind's movements thoughts, mind's movements. He says, um, mind's movements dissolve by themselves like clouds in the sky. People of Tingri, in the mind there is no reference point. So here he's talking about the, the thoughts, the movement of mind, saying just like clouds in the sky, they appear, or like waves on the ocean, but he says, Clouds in the sky, clouds appear, take shape, drift ac across space, dissolve back into space again. This vastness of space has no limits, no boundary, uh, no reference point. So we should again stop fixating in our meditation. Even our meditation should be free from fixation if we are able to do that. The views he is describing, I think it is not so easy to maintain, but we can try and practice this, try and just sit, try and just look directly at the mind itself for awareness, try and just sit within awareness directly in the present moment without an object, just resting in the moment of clarity presence, emptiness, or let this movement of mind just let it come, let it go, but don't, don't follow it. 
And then in our meditation, what we should do is we should know when to apply remedies. We should know when to tighten up. We should know when to bring in relaxation. We should know when to, uh, you know, bring in more sort of mindfulness and awareness. When the mind is dull, we should stimulate the mind. We should bring, we should inspire ourselves for the practice, bring to mind what helps to wake us up. If the mind is scattered and very busy, we should bring in more relaxation. Um, so that's what is important for us to know, is when to, when to tighten our awareness, when to relax our awareness within this, you know, observing the mind's movements. Uh, so then the last verse here, he says, without fixation, thoughts are freed by themselves, just like the wind. People of Dingri, like the wind which never clings to any object. So here he's talking about fixation. If we can let go of fixation, there's no problem. Every moment we have a new Opportunity. Every moment is fresh. The previous moment is gone. We can relate directly to what is happening right there when we don't fixate. Thoughts are freed by themselves. He says it's like the wind. The wind doesn't get caught. The wind just, it has no solidity. So this Aspect or tendency to fixate is what we should look at. We should make a, re a resolution to reduce our fixation. Every day, make a resolution to let go, learn to let go, reduce our clinging, reduce our clinging to ideas, to our needs, to our wishes for how things were rather than accepting how they are. Our wishes for things to be different our fixation on, on what we th how we think things are, our fi fixation on our uh, ideas of what is, fixation on our own perception of things around us. So if we can do that, just like the wind blowing within space, there's no obstructions, there's no obscurations, there's just clarity and emptiness. And that is what Padampa Sangha is encouraging us to do, to remember these, uh, remember to have the right attitude to thoughts, fix feelings, and attachment and aversion, mind's movement and fixation. Don't let them become obs obscurations for you on the path. Instead, relate to them like he's saying, relate to them like a rainbow, like the wind, like a drawing on water like a rainbow in the sky, then we'll find that uh, if we can let go of that tendency to solidify everything, uh, we are we're having, uh, we're going in the right direction. <laughs>